Hey, what's going on, guys? Welcome back, Droid Life Show. Ooh, vibrate episode one twenty six today. It's Friday, November eleventh. I'm Kellen. With me, Tim. Tim at. Hey, guys. How's it going, Tim? Here. So yeah, I had a week off. Uh, we're back though with quite a bit to talk about. Um, Google has a couple of new products out outside of Pixel. We have Google Home now, Daydream View. It's all sorts of stuff. We got Galaxy S8 rumors, which is just, I still can't wrap my brain around the idea of there being S8 rumor. I guess when your other phone blows up, you got to have something to feed the press. So there's that. Uh, And we will actually update you on Note 7 stuff. Uh, Tim's got a new Huawei phone in hand that's massive. HTC has a new phone out. There's Nougat updates maybe rolling out all over the place. There's quite a bit going on uh, for it being November. So, uh, Let's start though, Google Home, right? So Google Home came out last week. Yep. Last week. So Google Home dropped and uh, a bit of a, a bit of a weird launch for Google, I would say. Like when the Pixels came out, they sent all these review units out to press. Like we got some and had, you know, we posted reviews if we wanted, or you know, we always wait a little bit longer to do more testing and stuff, but like massive advertising campaign, Pixel, big, big deal. And then Google Home only sent to like a handful of press i don't know that i've seen a google home advertisement anywhere have you seen one like outside of the internet yeah i haven't seen a google home like specific ad on tv yet yeah so i I don't know if that's google admitting that this thing is like just kind of meh right now they don't want to get a bunch of people hyped on it if they've they're spending every ounce of marketing budget on the pixel phones i'm not sure but we we each have them in house so uh, you want to just go over like early thoughts? Are you using your Google Home much? I know you got a sweet new base for it. <laughs> yeah, I got uh, I got Google Home all set up in the house. Super excited about it. It's amazing. Um, what's great is that I said goodbye, Alexa. You know, to the Amazon Echo. I straight up just unplugged it. Canceled yeah. my Prime Music a uh, little three dollar a month thing. thing. It was just like the trial, and um, I was like so happy because now. I've got my ecosystem, right? The ecosystem that I'm invested in being Google's uh, with Google Play Music, YouTube Music and all that. Now that's right in my kitchen and I can do everything that I was doing with Echo, uh, but now it's Google. And, you know, every time I say, okay, Google Play Freebird, um, oops, there we go. Um, I said the words you're not supposed to say. Um, Play (laughs) Freebird. And it plays Freebird. And, uh, so yeah, uh, initial impressions though, uh, you know, I guess the real, oh, everything's going off now. Yeah, yeah. Big deal. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> I must have had my speaker slightly on. Oh, okay, I thought I heard myself kind of talking in the background. Anyway, yeah, that would be why. Um, the speaker quality itself seems really good. I would say it doesn't sound as good as, as Amazon Echo um, in terms of like sort of like the low range of sound, uh, like the bass, not all that there. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I so far have enjoyed having assistant, um, inside of my kitchen, specifically the way that it interacts with say my personal Google calendar. And I can say the words, uh, you know, what's on my agenda today, et cetera. And then it's linked already to like everything that's already on my phone. And so I think that for me, just given that I'm already invested in the Google ecosystem, it makes so much more sense than Amazon echo. So, so far. I'm loving Google Home. I get, I got that new base. Um, it's like the violet uh, kind of woven one, and I think it looks really cool. I will say they they are priced sort of ridiculously. It's twenty dollars for the woven ones, but forty dollars for the metal ones, which just seems ridiculous for something that you it literally will yeah. not use. It doesn't do anything. You can buy a $40. Chromecast for that. Exactly. And it, like there's, there, there's no, it's just a piece of something like it's, I think that's really stupid. Other than that, Google assistant, I'm definitely enjoying having it in the house. Yeah. I've been using my, so I have two, I have two, I have one out there in kitchen and then I have one right behind me in office. And so I also invested in some, just a handful of Philips hue lights in the house, partly to do testing and because I've just been interested, but I, I've I've been using the thing like crazy. Like this one is right since it's in my office and it's right by like the front of my house. When I walk in the door, I can say, 
you know, the magic words and then say, turn on hallway lights. And it does, I don't have to like touch anything and it does that or kitchen lights or whatever. So I've been using it a lot for that. Uh, obviously the music has been nice and casting it from like to different speakers. Like I have a Chromecast audio connected to some bookshelf speakers and I can just say like play on bookshelf and it does that, which I've done quite a bit. Uh, and then I have a nest also, so I can turn the temperature up and down and all that stuff. The timer stuff's fine, but you know, echo did all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, I've, I've kind of been using it like crazy. Um, sure. I, I, I can't wait for it to be able to do more. Although I don't know. Well, it would be nice if I could use it with my like front door lock. Cause that's one of those August locks. I could maybe do that through IFTT. I guess I have TTT because I haven't really looked, but I'm pretty I'm pretty into it. Like Echo, like I never really use much of the extra features other than like set a timer and attempt to play music that it could never access because it didn't have access to that. But uh, this stuff I'm actually using quite a bit. And I think a lot of it is like you said, because it's attached to my Google account. And so it's like all of the services I use anyway. So yeah, I mean, someone brought up in the chat um, just to give credit where credit's due, Michael. Um, you know, he said, oh, but there's G calendar integration on Echo. Like, yeah, I mean, there was a lot of stuff you can do on Echo. I mean, it's pretty much the same experience overall, I think, between Echo and Google Home. Um, but the fact that Google Home, it, it just works. Like, I don't really have to see. I don't mess with um, if Triple T or anything like that. Like, I just don't I don't want to set all that stuff up. It seems like a real pain sometimes. So the fact that it just works out of the box with everything that I have already on Google services in my account like it just makes it easier for me as just like a dude who deals with this stuff all day long because it's my job. I don't want to like take my own personal time to set that stuff up. Like call me lazy, but that's fine. I'm lazy. <laughs> so that's just my opinion on it. Um, people who have Echo, I wouldn't say if you enjoy Echo, I don't see any reason for you to dump Echo, you know, unless like the Google Play music integration is like something you really, really want or right. need. And the, cast, other, and the casting to different things, but that doesn't yeah. really even work yet. Like you can cast YouTube to TVs, but nothing right. else really. So that's not even really there yet. Yeah, I mean, really, if you want, you could just hold off on Google Home for a while, maybe until Google throws in some like new features that really makes it stand apart from Amazon Echo. But other than that, I wouldn't say you need to jump ship and sell your Echo and buy a home or anything like that. Um, yeah, I it would still be tough. See the need. Yeah, if you already own an Echo, I, I don't, yeah, I don't really know why you need to rush out and buy Google Home at this time. It's pretty limited. Like the, the services and other like smart home stuff that it integrates with, it's what Smart Things, Nest, and Philips Hue. Like I think that's it. And there's a whole bunch of other smart home companies out there. So it doesn't really do that much. The music services, it does like Spotify, Google Play Music, and Pandora. I think it was Tune In, whatever Tune In is. Google would have been smart to really think about multi-account support for the launch of Google Home. And not only that, but having Home differentiate between two different voices. For example, if I ask Google what my day looks like and then my girlfriend can ask, hey, what's my day look like? Obviously, we have different voices and um, and we know that our phones can, are, can be trained to recognize only our voices when saying the uh, magic words. Uh, so it would have been nice if Google Home could have had the ability to support kind of a that multi account um, for for inquiries such as that. Um, that definitely could have been cool, and I think that's something that they are. They've said that they're working on. They're working to bring multi account support. Yeah. So fingers crossed that that doesn't take too long because I think that's a big selling thing. Yeah, and it's it's I'd imagine it's going to have to be voice recognition, or are you going to have to say whatever Google? switch accounts because that would be kind of a pain that would be a to like toggle thing. between yeah it's yeah. gonna have to almost be a voice recognition thing i don't know if the microphones are that good or not i'm not really sure i would hope so i mean i mean, google touts how smart assistant is and it's always learning and i i just assume the technology is there however i will say um, they still haven't figured out how to easily transfer uh, like one Android Wear device to another without having to wipe the device completely. Yeah, so I won't so put I won't put anything past Google in terms of just being like a simple idea and making it like the hardest thing in the world. So that's Google for you. Yeah. Uh, so far though, Google Home, especially at the price, 129 bucks, it's a pretty good deal. Like if you don't have a smart home speaker thing and you are interested in one, it's probably a good 
investment, 129 bucks. I, I would imagine Google's going to probably heavily invest in it going forward. I don't think this is something they're just going to abandon. They want to be a hub in your home, and this is sort of how they how they get there, at least start. So, right. Yeah, Google Home. I'm, I'm totally satisfied with it so far. I, I don't know what else I want it to do yet, but I think <laughs> as Google adds services and I pick up pieces to my house, smart home here and there, like yeah, it'll be it'll be great. I agree. I agree. So far, so good. I mean, I'm not able to say um, the words and then goodbye, or and then she like shuts down my house or anything like that. But we're getting there. I should try that because I did. Like I said, I did buy some lights and then I have nests, and I should try right. that. See what happens. Yes, I did say it, and she just says, um, "I'll be here" or something like that. Like she doesn't oh. say, "Have a good day," or she just says, "I'll be here." <laughs> like. Like, I'm sorry, you're chained to my house. Like, I can't take you with me. Misleading (laughs) marketing from Google Home already. Although, I mean, that really, I think that excited a lot of people. When that, at Google I.O., when they showed that off, that little girl Mm -hmm. walking out the door saying goodbye, and it was like the cutest thing ever, and the whole house lights shut off, and all the TVs turn off. Like, it's coming. It's just this is launch, right? So we're not there quite yet. But then again, that's my problem with a lot of companies is not just Google. They show you the potential, right? But then you need third-party developers to integrate all this stuff. And then really, you never get to that final vision that they showed when they first announced the thing. And that's sort of like... Yeah, never. That is like false advertising, I would say. Um, so I guess maybe, they get away with it by saying, no, this is what it could do in the future with your it's help. Vision. But it's it's like, our vision. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Well, they'll be seeing a class action lawsuit here pretty soon. Yeah, because if you go back and watch that initial Google Home video, it's one of the cooler, like, tech futuristic videos that yeah. actually doesn't feel that far away. And, right. like, a lot of that stuff, I don't know that you can really do. Yeah. <laughs> but you can, like, not to keep going back to, like, the Philips U lights, like, you can ask Assistant, like, if lights are on and it'll tell you and things like that, It's which is kind of cool. But you obviously have to then start putting all this stuff in all these different rooms and it can be kind of overwhelming and expensive ridiculous so yeah all right uh in other google news daydream view i don't it's not laying here it's in a it's in a box hold on it's already back in a box (laughs) it's already back well it's not (laughs) mine it's google's right so it's a review unit so uh daydream view uh i've had it for a week or so and uh did a short review on it yesterday tough product to review because it's hard to show you exactly what's going on but uh as you guys know this is google's VR headset. Here it is. VR headset. Wow. Um, it is. Uh, it's very soft, very comfortable. Unlike uh, Samsung's plastic thing. Not that Gear VR is bad by any means, but you know, like Gear VR is just kind of plasticky and not that comfortable to wear. Yeah. This thing is actually pretty comfortable to wear. Um, and it comes with this sweet little remote, oh. which is actually sort of what makes it a pretty decent ex- experience. Um, Overall, I'm actually a pretty big fan of Daydream View. I was like the ultimate VR hater for a really long time. Yeah. And then I uh and then I picked up Vive and now I'm totally on board with certain VR systems that are done well like Vive and like this one I think has some nice potential but it's 79 bucks. And most people that bought the Pixel, if you pre-ordered it, you're going to get one for free, although we don't know when Google's going to send those promo codes out, promo codes, but uh yeah, it's a it's it's a much better experience in VR if you're into mobile VR than Samsung's because Samsung's has that stupid touchpad up here, and this thing has a, like a little remote and you control things and there's motion other than tapping on the side of your head, which is ridiculous. So uh, yeah, I mean, it's mobile VR. This is not like game changing VR stuff. You're using your phone to power it, but if you want like a simple VR experience, you can kind of do from anywhere since you're not wired in. It's actually yeah. pretty solid. I'm kind of annoyed at all the different companies who feel that it's necessary to introduce their own VR headset. I really think it's stupid, and I think it's detrimental to the virtual reality ecosystem. Um, let me give you... I mean, you just want one company to have one system? Yeah. Like, why not just... Like, there's no standard, dude. Uh, so, for example, my issue... We'll have the vrcoalition.gov soon, and they will create... Thank you. We need, a co- we need a VR coalition, a partnership, <laughs> an international trans-Pacific partnership of VR. Um, my my beef is that... <laughs> VRTPP. <laughs> That'll go uh, over well, yeah. Yeah. 
my issue is is that so Samsung has had developers working on applications for their platform. These same developers and their applications are not compatible with Daydream. Yep. Now Google has to coax those same developers because there's only so many of them in the world, right? Who want to develop for VR. Now you got to right. coax them into making it for Daydream. And, and then on the other hand, you've got Vive, their whole freaking community of developers. You got Oculus and Facebook with their whole community of people and Steam. It's kind of becoming what I would call a cluster, uh, other word. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I just think it's not good for consumers, right? I understand that um, these companies have their own experiences that they want to push and all, and one one in their head is better than the other. But as a consumer, you know, say like, say my mom wants to buy a VR headset. How on earth is she supposed to know which one is better, which are good, which are bad? Well, it depends on like what phone does she have? Because exactly. your They're, VR only works with Samsung. Them. This daydream only works with Pixel right now. So, And I think like... that's my main beef, right? Like there is no standard. Not that I'm yeah. big on monopolies because I hate Comcast and all that good stuff. But the... F- the fact is, is that it's detrimental, I think, to the user experience when there's not some type of standard going on. So I think like it's, said, yeah. So much. my thought is just because it's early, right? VR is still early. So you have the two, well, three big ones now in, in like powerful <laughs> VR. You have Vive, Oculus, and PlayStation. And those three will battle to see who sort of comes out to hopefully like we might have a winner and then hopefully that helps somebody decide sort of a standard and then other people could compete in that sort of standard space uh with mobile it was samsung and they were way ahead of everyone i mean we're on what the third version of gear or something like that yeah well if you consider the initial ones it's probably like the fifth version so they were way ahead and they partnered with oculus uh, but yeah, like you said, if you own a pixel, you can't tap into any of that. And I get like they, you know, Samsung says like, well, we invested early and we're ahead. Like, why should we open this up to everyone? I get why they're saying that, but it sucks. Yeah. And so, yeah, if you're, if you're new to VR and you want to get into VR, you actually don't really have that many choices. If you own a Samsung phone, obviously you have, or you have gear VR, but if you own like a G5, get I, cardboard. Yeah, and I guess you could go buy one of those like other sort of Gear VR like headsets. Like OnePlus makes one, right? And you could get that and slap your G5 in there, I think, and then download like some cardboard apps. But is the experience that great? Probably not. No. So yeah, it, I think it'll get better when uh, Google hopefully opens up Daydream to more. Fun. Like I think next year, because all these phones will be Daydream supported, because nothing is right now except Pixel, and then people will be able to get into it, but we're what six months away from that ever yeah. starting. So uh, uh, Jason says in the chat, PlayStation will win. And I'm assuming he's yeah. just talking about the PlayStation VR battle. Yeah. Um, I haven't tried PlayStation VR. Like I've been really debating on whether to get one or not. If someone has one in the chat, please let me know. Um, Cause I recently got a PlayStation four because I wanted to play something. I wanted to play no man's sky. But of course, that game ended up being garbage. So I Isn't never even bought it. <laughs> that you that was like the reason, sort of one of the reasons that you it bought it. It was the main reason I got a PlayStation. Game, nope. <laughs> so if someone has PlayStation VR, let me know so I can think about purchasing one. <laughs> but yeah, VR. I, I'm, I'm I'm probably with him, and that PlayStation will win. Lots of people own PlayStations, and right. it's just an accessory, basically, right? Yeah. Uh, with Vive and Oculus, you have to own a really fancy Windows PC that can power it. And so it's like a, this extra thing you have to buy and set up. Um, where I think Vive wins is just because it's room scale, and you can walk around and interact in environments. You're not just seated in a single position. So I think that's why Vive's so great. But... Yeah, it's expensive and PlayStation already has this massive market where they just need to talk people into buying the accessory, which gives you VR. So Right. Yeah, well. Uh Brad says, doesn't Xbox have a VR console coming too? Yeah, I mean I actually don't know. Um don't know I'm so VR. over Xbox and Microsoft right now. Uh I'm super pissed in general, right? Because now PlayStation PlayStation I screwed up, right? Because all of my friends played Xbox. And so I just, I got an Xbox without even thinking about like checking the actual upgrade itself versus 360 and the one. So we now know that PlayStation is a superior, superior console, <laughs> like no doubt about it. 
and Xbox, I don't know what they're doing. All they're doing is slashing the price. They ca- came out with the Xbox One S. It's slim. Like, like there's no, there's no imagination going on at Microsoft right now or the Xbox team. So even if they do have a VR system coming out, I'm not going to buy it most likely or support it. I think moving forward, maybe the next gen of consoles that comes out, I'll probably move over to PlayStation. Uh, How much does the PlayStation VR cost? I don't know. It's not expensive at all. Really? I want to say it's like I, I'm gonna let you Google it because I'll probably sound like an idiot. I want to say if like two hundred bucks to, uh, or something. Like two fifty. It might be four hundred bucks. Three hundred, four hundred. I think it's four hundred. That's not that bad. That's why I said it's four hundred. But you don't need anything else, right? Like you just buy it, and it comes with the headset. And yeah, is it all seated stuff though? Like you have a controller. Most likely. Just... Well, no. Well, you can use your little magic balls, your little magic wand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. But you can't. You still can't get up and like walk around a room. I, I think the only so. way Vibe does that is because it has the two like laser the sensors. sensors. Yeah. yeah. So I guess unless somebody else builds that in, but yeah. But yeah, it's still like PlayStation already has like this massive market built. <laughs> it is four hundred bucks though, so it's not like that cheap. It's not that cheap, but then again, it's not that bad. I guess if you compare it to Vibe, right? I mean, PlayStation it's a powerful machine. So the Move motion controllers are hundred bucks. So five hundred dollar total investment. Mm-hmm. Eh, it could be worse. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. You could um, buy a Vive, and then you need to buy a PC. So instead of spending two thousand dollars, you're only spending five hundred. That's not bad. Yeah. And I mean, PlayStation was made for gaming, right? So I I just feel like you can expect better quality games coming from PlayStation than you will Steam. Or, you know, NVIDIA. NVIDIA almost seems like they're the only freaking VR developers out there right now, and they're making, like, Carnival Ride stuff. So, but I don't know. I don't have Vive. I'm not really big into VR just because I get motion sick. <laughs> so, why Yeah, that's kind of tough. Yeah, yeah it, it sucks for me. I got to take, like, a bottle of Benadryl just to even try it. <laughs> there was fun. a couple of games in Daydream that instantly my head just kind of went, whoa, 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 I don't like that. And I just, like, got out of it before it did make me sick. But for the most part, yeah, I can handle a lot of it for some reason. That's good. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, Daydream View, awesome VR headset for just mobile VR stuff. That's not saying it's, like, the most amazing experience ever. There's not a lot of games and apps yet. There's a handful that are actually pretty decent. Google seems to be taking it pretty seriously, though, so I think it will certainly get better. But, yeah, no one can use it unless you own a Pixel. So <laughs> yeah. it's kind of hard to talk a lot about it when no one can really get into it it's brutal yeah all right let's see so there's been a whole bunch of galaxy s8 talk lately and we've sort of avoided most of it because it's just hard to like be like yeah these galaxy s8 rumors are the legit and this is what's going to happen like it's november and this phone or phones s8 won't be out for till march april Maybe not even that long, February. <laughs> I mean, we're... Yeah, but so every year we do this, right? Everyone's like, right. It, they're going to push it up. They're going to push it up. And then they're like, no, we're going to announce it at MWC. And then it'll come out like three weeks later. And that's what we do every year. Like, you know, at CES, like or in early December, somebody's going to go, Samsung's really feeling that pain from the Note 7. They're totally going to move up the S8 and they may show it off just around CES. And it'll never happen. <laughs> But you can mark my words, like that report will come out. Sure. <laughs> I believe it. I've seen oh. it every year since 2010. Yeah, I mean every year. All right. So anyway, the latest Galaxy S8 rumors are what? There's two models and they're like bezel-less, all display, <laughs> glass, everything. Do you want to talk about this? Because I haven't really kept up. Yeah, I mean, like you said, there's always a ton of reports and rumors coming out. But these ones are all aligning so darn well. And I think that's why it kind of excites me just as like kind of like a Galaxy fan just because Samsung has been really good lately with the design and overall quality of their phones. Uh, so the latest one hit this week is that the Galaxy S8 will come in two models, um, say a Galaxy S8 and a rumored Galaxy S8 Plus. So because both of the devices are said to feature kind of that dual edge like we saw with S7 Edge and Galaxy Note 7, Um, none of them will feature like an edge moniker. They're both going to be edge technically, but it's going to be kind of subtle like it was on the Note 7. So not completely, not like a Galaxy round or anything, but uh, like a very subtle edge curved display. 
Uh, one will feature a 5.7 inch display and one will be a 6.2 inch bezel-less display. So 6.2 inch, quite large. However, due to the fact that these are said to be completely bezel-less um, with no home button, uh, that these displays really won't, um, or the overall bodies of the phones won't be much bigger than what we've seen already in the past with the S7 or S7 Edge is that that display is going to take up all that space. So while the displays get bigger, the overall body does not. So anyone who didn't want like a second coming of the Nexus 6 or Shamu or anything like that, you don't have to worry. These aren't going to be the hugest phones in the world. They're just going to have really big bezel-less displays. And that's exciting, right? I mean, how could you not be excited about that? Not only that, um, will they be bezel-less, but they're said they're rumored and reported to be 4K AMOLED displays uh, with phones possibly featuring 8 gigs of RAM. And, and again, this lines up so perfectly because Samsung has already announced that they started production of this 8 gig uh, mobile DRAM. And, and what else they got going on? Oh, we know that Qualcomm is getting ready to announce the Snapdragon 830, or what are they on now? Probably 830, yeah. Yeah, the 830. So these phones are said to feature that. And, and really, I mean, if you're just an Android nerd like we are, I don't know how you can't be excited for the, the potential or the possibility of some huge 6.2 inch bezel 4k display with a Snapdragon 830. I it's think like, that scares me a little bit because <laughs> I, I think phones do need some bezel. Yeah. Otherwise when you hold like the note seven, this used to happen. Like you would hold it and it was big enough. You'd like reach across and like the, where your thumb would squeeze the side of the display. Like it would activate things. It does it on the edge phones too. But no home button, man. A Samsung phone without a home button. This is That's like actually, the second, this yeah. is the second coming, people. <laughs> yeah. So while I great. would be a little uneasy about an all display display with no sure. bezel, the no home button thing, or it that must mean it'll be like some sort of touchpad, right? Right. Like it's embedded in the display itself. Um, yeah, same with the fingerprint reader. It's all embedded. Which I mean, I just I thought we were maybe a few years away from that type of stuff, but apparently Samsung. Well, I think They're, Qualcomm announced some sort of technology that does that. It didn't Xiaomi, Xiaomi keeps doing everything first because they made the no bezel phone, the Xiaomi right. Mi Mix or whatever. Yeah. But I think they also did a phone that had the fingerprint reader under the glass. So it's pretty intense. This is like, this is a um, minority report type stuff. It is kind of getting to that sort of crazy level. Yeah. Um, and then they also what announced that, no, not announced. There's a report out there that they will put their own assistant. Right, new assistant powered by V or Vive. Um, I think it's just V V I V. Uh, but they uh, same the people who founded V, the same people who created Siri, which Apple purchased many years ago, and we all know where that is now. So Samsung will have their own digital, reportedly, will have their own digital assistant in the Galaxy S8 smartphones to sort of compete with Apple Siri and Google Assistant. Do we so, think it'll be any good? Because look, like this uh, is the company that supposedly made Siri and a lot of people still complain that Siri sucks and that's after they sold it and Apple's had control of it for a couple of years. Right, I mean, this is supposed to be more on the lines of Google Assistant more so than Siri where Google Assistant ha is very much AI, contextual, machine learning capabilities. It's supposed to be incredibly smart <laughs> but I don't know if anyone remembers, but Samsung used to uh, include on their devices something called S Voice, and it was kind of like Siri. Is that not there? It's got to be still there, right? No, no way. That's been gone for years. S Voice now. is really gone. Oh yeah. So S Voice, which I'm pretty sure is gone. I haven't seen it. Uh, it sucked. <laughs> it oh, sucked. it was the worst. And you used to like? <laughs> didn't you? Did you long press on the home button to activate yeah. it? It was either a long press or a double press. I don't know. Um. But either way, I'm so... No way S Voice is still here. I swear be. it was there. Well, it was there still last year, I think. It, maybe it's gone this year. I'm trying to find it, but this phone is just like spinning. I uh, I I swore I looked for it like back on the Galaxy S6, I think. Oh I don't God, think I could totally find still it. Here. Yeah. It's just hidden. It's just hidden deep. S Voice. Yeah, it's totally on my unlocked S7. Oh, that's terrifying. Well... Nice color me stars. oh man i just remember how ugly it was it was um like that super bright bluish and it's slow ugly yeah, i never was, understood anything you said it was back when samsung put s before every product they made and it was just yeah. like the running joke of the industry yeah. but yeah so hopefully this new thing um s voice version 2.0 
will be much better <laughs> and smarter. Do you think they just call it that again? They just keep sure. saying like this is the new S voice. I well, you'd have not. to call it S assistant or S assistant. Well, no, give her a name. Please give her a name. So it's got to start with an S. Like call her Sally, Sarah, something. I don't know. It, it needs to have a name though. I like the assistants with names. Like call me crazy, but I like Siri more so than I like Google Assistant. So, I, I, and like uh, Cortana, I love that more than I love Google Assistant. I just like well, the name. Assistant's. Assistant's still a weird name, I think, because you don't talk, you don't say like, hey, assistant. You're always just talking to Google. Right. So it's just, it's like you have this assistant, which remember <laughs> that the, initially they tried to move away from assistant being an actual name. And then they finally just gave in and were like, yes, it's just called Google Assistant. Anyways, yeah, I'm with you. It needs to have like a name. I mean, it's I, fine to like talk to Google. I get it. We all search Google all day long. But yeah, hopefully Samsung comes up with a new name. Yeah, and wants Jarvis. <laughs> I want Jarvis. Yeah, Jarvis is cool. Jarvis is there. I thought, um, isn't that one of the Easter eggs in Google? Like, okay, Jarvis or something, and then I that works. I know you can say okay, computer, or hey, computer. There's a few you can say. We've done posts on this. Uh, so in the chat, well, I mean, their their name is Samsung Shield, but he says he's really tired of saying the. Okay, G O O G L E command. <laughs> I'm yeah. with him on that. I'm so sick of that. I like so with with home now. You can also say hey, G O O G L E, and I much yeah. prefer saying that than the okay. All right, because you're adding a, an extra. What is it? Uh, yeah, it's like a third syllable, basically, right, to the whole syllable. Thank or you. a fourth to the whole thing. Whatever, but it's oh. just, it's two to start. Yeah, yeah. instead yeah. of just hey, which hey is just easier to say. I wish I could just say hey, Goog. Like yeah, they should they should probably let people customize, but they probably won't. They want you to say Google every single time. Because people are weird and evil and they would just program it to like prompt the meanest phrase in the human language. They probably would, yes. Yeah. And that's not nice. Come on, people, grow up. Yeah. Uh let's see. So Galaxy Note 7 stuff. Uh not to keep hammering on the Galaxy Note 7. Now we're but, still talking about that phone, really. Yeah, this is gonna be <laughs> quick though. So Samsung said last week that uh or was it earlier this week? That was last week. They said that 85% of recalled Note 7s have already been replaced. And uh, they said that the majority of returnees are getting Samsung phones, but they didn't put a number on it. So I'd imagine it's not that high. Like that tells me if they're not willing to say like 95%, like that probably means it's probably like 60 or something. And they're not really that happy. Uh, outside of that, that means 15% of people still have, like me, still have this thing too. Look, oh my. I have, like I should probably be arrested for. Yeah, you've already been reported to CIA, FBI, Homeland Security, et cetera, et cetera. Everybody want to note seven? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I should probably take that back. But um, fifteen percent of people still have these things. Uh, I just have one because I'm lazy. I'm not using it. I hope that fifteen percent of people aren't still using theirs because that's kind of scary. Uh, but so what Samsung's going to do is work with all the carriers. And they've already started doing this. They're pushing an update out to all remaining devices that limits their battery charging to 60%. So even if you own this and you're trying to just ignore the recall, they're about to ruin your phone. And they probably should. Like, you should not be using a Note 7 anymore. Uh, it's going to limit it to 60% unless you somehow keep denying the update. But I wonder if they're not just going to force it through anyway. How how can people... Why would you want to use that I phone? I have like, no idea, dude. It's been recalled. I mean, I just don't. I don't understand... Like I was not a philosophy major or psychology major in college. I, I just don't understand like the disconnect between, okay, this phone has been recalled. Not only that, Samsung should have every right to just automatically shut it down. Like uh, uh, send an update where the phone cannot uh, connect to a carrier. Yeah, like Dan says in the chat, IMEI, block it. Yep. It's done. So I don't know what they're doing. I don't know why they would put more customers at risk. I guess this is actually Samsung's fault. If more more... If more people get hurt, it's because Samsung didn't do enough to get these phones out of people's hands. So, well, well and that's the thing too. Not not to like stand here and back up Samsung, but Samsung wants these all gone so that they stop blowing up and we stop seeing reports of like here's another Note Seven blowing up. Like if there's fifteen percent of these in the wild, that's not good for Samsung because even if it's not a Note Seven blowing up, somebody could blame it on that and they just need them all gone. So, yeah. Anyway, that's the latest there. They're still trying. 
Yeah, poor Samsung. Poor Note 7. That was uh, that was phone of the year, people. I don't know yeah. if you all realize that, but... Probably was. And it might have had Nougat by now, or pretty soon. Maybe. I'll believe it when I see it. But Maybe I won't too. see it. So, I mean, Samsung could have promised anything, <laughs> but... At this point, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nope. <laughs> all right, so uh, Huawei announced a brand new phone this week. The Huawei Mate 9. Which yeah, Tim Huawei. actually has. You want to talk about the Mate 9? What is it? Specs? Whatever. Yeah, Huawei Mate 9. Um, Huawei's latest flagship device. What a handsome device. It's extremely premium in hand. Uh, we do not have... We know that it's coming to the U.S., according to Huawei. However, we do not have pricing or kind of like availability... Uh, ava- of- Tongue twisted. Availability yet. Uh, so... It is coming to China and Europe for the price of 699 euros. So when that translates to American, we're going to be looking at quite a quite a expensive device. It's going to be uh, competing against the best of the best on the market. So in terms of specs, 5.9 inch full HD. That's 1080p display. So not quad it's HD. It's kind of ridiculous. Five point, it's basically a six inch display, and six it's six inch display, and it's full HD, not full quad. HD. Yeah, that's good for battery life, though. So not too bad. 4,000 milliamp hour battery in here, too. Um, so you should be getting good battery life from here. Uh, we have dual Leica branded. I stress branded. Uh, Leica branded cameras on the back. One 20 megapixel monochrome sensor and the other 12 megapixel RGB sensor with optical image stabilization. Uh, F2.2. So, you know, not... the. Probably the 12 megapixel, the RGB, probably not the best sensor in the world, but still, it's got optical image stabilization. Could be good for shooting videos. Uh, other specs include 4 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs built-in storage, micro SD, 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. We have always known all along, Huawei does not have courage. So we got the headphone jack, and then on the bottom, USB Type-C. Fingerprint reader on the back. It's kind of like the Nexus 6P in terms of where it is, although it feels quite a bit different. Like it's much more deep cut into the phone instead of kind of sitting on the phone, if that makes sense. Uh, How big is that phone, really? When you hold it, does it feel obnoxious, or is it not really that bad? Uh, uh, I've been using the XL, right? So it doesn't feel too obnoxious. It's definitely it's, bigger, though. It's taller. It's not much wider. Let me let me look. Yeah, it's, not, it's like a hair wider, but it's taller. So... I'm a hipster, skinny wearing jeans kind of guy. So of course, in my pocket, it's sort of uncomfortable. Um, but if you rock a purse or a purse, um, or maybe a satchel, some type of satchel, then it's probably going to be fine for you. <laughs> but it is sort of a large phone. But you know, it looks good, feels good. It actually looks pretty nice. I like that chocolatey color. I too. I opened the box and I was like, oh yes, they sent the chocolatey gold one. Yeah. Um, I think it looks good. Oh, and uh, of course, the big thing is that this comes running Android 7.0 Nougat out of the box with EMUI 5.0 running atop it. So completely new EMUI version. So I think that's pretty cool. However, yeah, so you just spent a long time with the Honor 8 and EMUI 4, and, it. and it was yeah. so terrible. Is that you've this only had better. this for a little bit, but can you tell already that's better? Yeah. Yeah, this is totally better. Uh, it's totally better. Believe me. It has so when you pull down on a notification, instead of just seeing like a timeline of your notifications, which was total BS. Yeah, I hated that. Yes. You actually have system toggles in the pull down now. And so and that's huge. It's so not only that, you can pull down again. And get all of your system toggles. Like it's not, it's not stupid. Like the previous EMUI. Yeah, it used to be really bad. This is this is a lot like Android. So that's a big thing. Also, I did not know this when I did my unboxing yesterday, uh, and I stated in the unboxing that there was no app drawer. There's a setting in the settings menu that gives you an app drawer if you really want an app drawer. So that's huge, huge improvement. Huawei is winning. Do the notifications work? Uh, I haven't actually gotten that far yet oh, i'm okay. still i'm working on my another review that i have coming so i haven't really started using this yet okay. um I'll, I'll just be interested to know because when i used what was it the p9 for a while like the notification situation was terrible and it sounded like it was on the honor 8 as well like right. you had to tweak everything to get them to show up properly and all that stuff so i'll just be interested to know if that is fixed on the mate 9 uh yeah so far i just took a screenshot i can tell you that screenshot notifications not there um so nothing on the lock screen either showing that i took a screenshot oh so so far not so good but 
But it's running nugget out of the box. Pretty and cool. And there's an app drawer. And there's an app drawer. And so, it's chocolate. And it's chocolate. Steps in the right direction. However, we when need he launches... more chocolatey gold phones, by the oh, way. I totally, I totally That's got to be the next trend. I think Samsung should make a chocolatey gold S8. It's a nice color. I mean, I got to I it gotta say. nice. Yeah, I watched your unboxing. I was like, ooh, that's a color we don't see very often. Exactly. It's something different. Mm -hmm. So... It seems pretty. It seems like a good device. I will say it's you know it's rather heavy. It, it's like it's metal. Um, definitely no signs of plastic. So Sing, single bottom speaker. Oh, uh, it, it shows that it has dual, but I just don't know yet. Again, I haven't gotten Probably that not, deep into it. I okay. would assume not. But it's designed to make it look like it has two. And we just have no idea when this is coming to the U.S. They said it probably will, but we just don't really know, right? Yeah. Oh, Huawei. Satchel, fanny pack. Yeah, if you rock a fanny pack, if you rock that fanny, you're good. <laughs> Nothing wrong with rocking a fanny in 2016. Oh, pretty sure they've come back a few times here and there. Yeah. Uh, let's see. HTC announced the HTC Bolt today, which is a phone that's been leaking for like months. I feel like, yeah. and uh, it's a Sprint exclusive. It's uh, 600 bucks retail, $25 a month if you go payments. I, I do not understand this phone at all. Okay, so Sprint exclusive. Okay. Um, it has a 5.5 inch quad HD display, which that's great. 60 megapixel OIS F2.0 camera on the back. Front eight megapixel, has a metal body. It actually looks a lot like the one, or I'm sorry, the HTC 10 fingerprint reader. Boom sound. Type C port, 3200 milliamp hour battery with quick charge 2.0, and it only has 2.0 because it's running a Snapdragon 810, which is like a two year old processor almost at this point. And then it has three gig of RAM, and most people put four gig RAM in these days. Uh, no headphone jack, but then it does have IP57 water resistance, and seven water resistance is actually not bad. Like that's what the iPhone 7 is. It runs NuGet. <laughs> HTC Sense. I, I just like what's the point? So you have this phone that has some high end stuff and then it has water resistance, but then it has a Snapdragon 810 and three gig RAM and no headphone jack. And it's still 600 bucks. Like if you're going to throw a two year old processor in a phone, shouldn't it uh, maybe not cost like $600? Shouldn't it cost like 400 bucks? I know processors aren't <laughs> that expensive these days, but Jesus. Sprint exclusive. Like, really? <laughs> No one cares. <laughs> and I feel so bad for HTC. Here they are struggling to um, really put out a device I think that everyone wants. And this obviously is not it, <laughs> in my opinion. I don't know why anyone would buy this phone. I don't know. I saw another site this morning. I don't like to name drop, and I won't. But I saw one site say that the HTC Bolt was sort of high-end or like blazingly fast along these lines. Well, that's uh, how they're, they're selling it as the fastest phone ever on Sprint's network. And all they're talking about is the, the, the modem. Spark network or whatever. Yeah, they're talking about their LTE Plus network and then the fact that it utilizes Qualcomm <laughs> chipsets that allow you to be fast. They're not even talking about performance. <laughs> I mean, the, the Nexus 6P runs an 810. Like, I'd buy that phone over I'd, this phone probably. I'd probably buy any phone over the HTC Bolt, dude. I'd, I would use the Le Echo Pro 3. They're uh, using Usain Bolt in the advertising, too. Like, oh, how, how fitting. How much money do you have to spend to get him? Yeah. That's ridiculous. I like why, what they should have done was redo the 10, like call it the HTC 10 Plus or something, right? And then add water resistance. And then there you go. And instead, they created an entirely new phone for no reason and dumbed it down with a cheap processor from two years ago. Think about it. I, I looked, actually, eight, Snapdragon 810. I just Googled Snapdragon 810 Droid Life to see when we first wrote about it. And we wrote about it, I believe, in December 2014 because it was coming in early 2015. And remember, LG's glass curved phone had it. Mm. And at CES, there all the rumors started about it being too hot and phones melting and all that crap, right? Mm -hmm. and that was in the beginning of 2015. And uh, LG was like, no, it's not overheating because they were using it in all their phones, right? 
So that's when the 810 first came out was like January 2015 ish. And it's now almost January 2017. And HTC just put that processor in a brand new phone. Wow. Well, good luck to you, HTC. We'll be here waiting for you <laughs> to catch up. Yeah, I just, yeah, go, just go by the, H, if you like HTC phones, just go by the HTC 10. I know you don't get water resistance, but you do get a headphone jack. Probably a better camera. No courage. HTC's got, well, wait, they do have With courage. With this phone, they had quite a bit wow. of courage. They so used a two year old yeah. flagship processor that overheats and took the headphone jack away. <laughs> That's actually a lot of courage. They've got uh, that's a lot of courage. Yeah. yeah, that's like the cup overfilleth with courage. Yeah. All right. Anyway, that happened today. You can actually go buy the Bolt right now. If you walked into a Sprint store, you could. They probably have two in stock, and they'll probably have two in stock tomorrow. <laughs> um, <laughs> poor HTC. Poor well, HTC. poor poor Sprint customers. I mean, they're really the ones getting screwed here. I think. Um, was this supposed to be the new Evo or something? It was supposed to be like a game changer. Like, yeah, we're just using an old crappy processor that used to burn people's hands and like I guess. throw it, throw some metal around it and sell it exclusively. It's like next Evo. Yeah. Imagine, well, I don't want to imagine a world where Sprint's the only carrier, but it's just not not, not a oh, good gosh. experience. I just can't imagine. I can't imagine uh-huh. going from like what I do now, mm-hmm. like on say like a Pixel phone on AT&T or Verizon to the HTC Bolt. Um, there is a little bit of water resistance, so they up that a little bit from fifty three to fifty seven. I read that yeah. right. Yeah, seven's so. seven's pretty high. That's iPhone seven water yeah. resistance, so you can totally dunk it underwater, all that stuff. Interesting. Well, what sucks is that HTC built the Pixel phones, which don't have that, and uh, they came out just expensive. a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, and they don't have IP fifty seven. Come on, Google. That's so weak. All right, uh, OnePlus will announce a new phone on November 15th. We are pretty sure it'll be called the OnePlus 3T. And both OnePlus and Snapdragon, sorry, Snapdragon, Qualcomm confirmed that whatever this phone is, it will run a Snapdragon 821. And OnePlus is really proud of themselves for clocking it at 2.35 gigahertz versus the Pixel phones, which are at 2.15. I mean, seriously, we're talking about a 0.2 gigahertz difference. Like, does that... You're not going to notice that. Like, who cares? But uh, that's happening. Do do we know anything else about the OnePlus 3T? I was going to say, do we know that it's even a phone? I was thinking for the last couple of days, it's a tablet. Oh, 3 tablet? Yeah. What would the T possibly stand for? Did somebody say phone? No, it just says something new. No one's ever said phone. No one's actually ever said phone. I think a lot of those say like Android blogs assume it's a phone, but I never saw like like Evan, I think, um, Ev Leaks. I don't think he ever specified that it was a phone. Hmm. Just a new device. They always said new OnePlus device. You're right. And then, then no one's actually, OnePlus and Qualcomm certainly haven't actually said phone. phone. Maybe it's a OnePlus tablet and they'll sell it for a reasonably price at a reasonable price point. I could see that. That, that could be interesting. It, I guess that could T, be fine. Why, yeah. I don't know why anyone needs a tablet. But. Yeah, someone's saying uh, T stands for turbo. <laughs> it's totally possible, right? The updated yeah. uh, internals could totally stand for turbo. Since, But yeah, I don't think it's confirmed that it's phone or tablet or or whatever. I, However, I as a OnePlus 3, um, say, fan, now that the on-screen buttons work, I would be so pissed if I was still using the OnePlus 3. When like, did the OnePlus 3 come out? It's not that well, old. A few, few months ago. A few months ago. If they did that and now are releasing this phone just a few months afterwards, really. I mean, it has not been a year. I don't even mm-hmm. think it's been half a year. Maybe mm-hmm. half a year max. Maybe. Five months? I don't know. Either way, I would demand that OnePlus begins a buyback okay. program. I would demand... They got to make a buyback program where they take back these crap OnePlus 3s, give us the 3T, like a discounted rate or something. Uh, and, you know, I just think that would be fair. We did a review. We did a review in July. A couple so months it, ago. All right. Yeah, it's, that's not it's August. So, a couple months. <laughs> it was announced in God, June. It already? Camera review in June. First 10 things in June. Unboxing mid June. So they announced it like mid June. 
and they might already have a newer upgraded one. I don't know that the A21 is that like improved over the A20, but it is new. Yeah. Yeah. And it will probably work with Daydream. Oh, uh, yeah. I, that's cool, I guess, for people. Someone, they announced it on the 14th, it looks like. Someone's yeah. really going to like that. Uh, like I said, though, OnePlus, I think you're screwing up. Um, you got to. <laughs> You got unless to allow, it's a tablet. Unless it's a tablet, then you're fine. Then, then you are proving um, how irrelevant what you're doing is. No offense to tablet people. I just I don't think tablets make much sense at this point in time. No, I they mean, were, Apple can't even sell iPads anymore. So yeah, a few years ago, I think tablets were pretty in. Now I think they're pretty out. So not to keep ranting, but I just think it's total BS. I mean, they just launched a phone, and this phone is going to be better. Um, that's that's messed up. It's, it's people five months ago, yeah, to early adopters who are big. Obviously, they got to be OnePlus lovers. Why? Why how else much, would you purchase? How much more do they charge for that, or do you think they cut the price on the regular OnePlus three and then make the three T four hundred? That would be they, cool. They probably won't, but that would be nice. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Tablet people, <laughs> yeah, tablet people. <laughs> They're their own type of people. Yeah. Uh, let's see. In Android Nougat news, uh, Samsung and LG did their thing this week where they battle back and forth over who can do something first. So uh, Samsung's Galaxy S7 and S7 Edge in the UK and the US are getting access to a Nougat beta. And uh, it started uh, two days ago, I believe. So you could sign up for it earlier this week. And then on the uh, no, on the 9th, so Wednesday, um, well, those signups went live, I should say, on the 9th. And then the update started yesterday for Sprint people, today for Verizon, and like tomorrow for T-Mobile, or maybe Monday. Uh, there's a schedule. We have it somewhere on our website. <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you own a Galaxy S7 or S7 Edge on T-Mobile, Sprint, or Verizon, you could actually, well, you could have. They probably shut down signups a long time ago. But So they're pushing beta test out, which is awesome. And then LG trying to outdo Samsung was like, well, wait a minute. We have Nougat and it's ready for the G5 in Korea only. And we will now try to push it to the rest of the world, which will just take forever, I'm sure. So LG is so cute. (laughs) And we don't know what HTC is doing, right? Have they announced anything about Nougat? I feel like they haven't said much. Obviously, they're working on it. Yeah. Yeah, when's the HTC 10 <laughs> getting nougat? I don't think anyone knows. I I thought it should have been within nine weeks or something like that of its launch or something like 15 weeks, something. I don't know. Yeah. I don't. And, we and I didn't ever... actually get in the beta program. My wife's phone will, but she's has a t- the T-Mobile variant, and that's not rolling out oh, yet. Oh, okay. Once she does, we'll take it for a spin. I'm sorry, Brad. I lied. Kellen did not get in, and neither did I. We have um, the the S7 that I tried on is a international model, and so the beta was locked, and I couldn't I couldn't access it. Yeah, and I have the US unlocked version and no go. They did not give uh, this version access, which is garbage, by the way. It's like unlocked version. It's the easiest one to push an update to, and like six people bought this phone. I'm one of them, right? So they should have updated (laughs) it. Bunch of garbage. There's a lot of garbage taking place right now. Like it's <sighs> a lot of BS, a lot of stuff to be mad about. What is going on? Uh, let's see. Uh, I just want to point out that prepaid people who are maybe not fans of prepaid now would be a time I think to look at prepaid uh, because everyone just keeps trying. Speaking of people trying to one up each other, uh, <laughs> this week, well, within the last two weeks, Cricket and AT and T, which are the same damn company. Uh, announced bumps to their GoPhone plans and Cricket plans where a $60 plan gets you 8 gig of high-speed data and 45 bucks gets you 4 gig, at least at AT AT&T. And if you pay with AutoPay, it cuts 5 bucks off that. So at AT AT&T, you can have unlimited talk, text, and 8 gig of data per month for 55 bucks, which is kind of an insane deal. Uh, Tim's on it. My wife's on it. It's AT&T service, full-speed data. Cricket, their $50 plan now has 8 gig of data, which is a pretty damn good deal, except they throttle your speeds at all times. So it depends on what you care about speeds or not. Uh, but to outdo AT&T, Verizon announced a $70, yeah, $70 plan with 10 gig of data. And I believe you can use that with tethering too if you're 
live on the wild side. Ooh. Yeah. I don't know. It's just if, if you've never considered prepaid, I would say look at Verizon AT&T's prepaid these days. And then if you don't like them, you can cancel them. That's sort of the beauty of prepaid. You just don't pay anymore and switch to a different carrier and all that stuff. Of course, you have to have a phone that works. but Naturally. It's a good time to be prepaid. I agree. I mean, you can pause service on prepaid, cancel it one month, switch to something, jump to another, whatever phone you have, as long as it's unlocked. It's Especially if you buy Pixel phones and things like that, you can take them to every carrier, find out which carrier you actually like. And they all offer prepaid services and they're all cheaper typically than their normal plans. And you don't mm-hmm. have to sign contracts. So, Interesting. Um, yeah. Let's see, Lenovo, little news on Lenovo. No, they're not bankrupt yet, but uh, they will no longer have Lenovo phones. They will oh, all no. be Moto phones going forward. So Lenovo's phone brand is essentially dead, right? Yep. And everything they release will be Moto. Yeah. So there's just going to be like 18 variants of Moto phones spread across the world that we can't keep track of. Yeah, like that wasn't already painful enough. Like yeah. Moto Moto's G, E's and G, Gen, G. Play, Style X. They killed the Moto E, I think, or is that still alive? Yeah. But now there's but now there's plays and forces and droids and uh, yeah, pain the Moto G, Moto G four plus Moto G four. I mean, there and now there. I think there's a Moto M in China, which we didn't talk about this week because it's some mid range garbage phone that's only available in China. Hey, how dare you? <clears throat> no, no, sorry. But yeah, look forward to uh, more Moto phones that we can't keep track of. Man. Pretty crazy. Um, I think it's a good thing, though, for Lenovo to really put more of an interest or maybe not even an interest, but a investment in Moto. I mean, it's an established brand. Well, Moto's not. Motorola was, um, but I guess they can drop the Rolla. That's fine. Moto's cool. Drop the Rolla. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they need to come out with the new Moto Moto. That would be sweet. That's a good one, Dan. I'm going to steal that uh the moto moto um i'm you know i just i miss the moto x or i guess right because i'm not a huge fan of the moto z wasn't a huge fan i I, you know i did i dug the moto mods and all that but just the moto x was cool it was like that kind of vanilla-esque android experience on in good hardware with we know motorola always had awesome radios so your cell quality was fantastic um so I kind of I just miss I miss what Motorola used to be. Now it's Lenoto and just not a huge haven't been a fan of what had any so real funny. winners yet. All exactly. outside of the Moto Z play. I'm telling you, if you need to buy a mid range phone, that's the one and battery life is what you care about, go buy that phone and it's the craziest thing I've ever seen. Yeah, I guess, you know, I, I didn't like the design when we first saw it, and then the design kind of grew on me, and now I've actually fallen back out of love with the design. Not a fan. So I don't know why that is. It's just, I guess it's just so different, right? I don't it's know. pretty different. I, I don't mind the design of the regular Moto Z because um, it's just so different. And I think that's, I think that's sort of what I appreciate. But then when you look right. at the phone as like that giant chin and it's just stupidly thin just to be thin. It, yeah. There's some things I like about the design. I don't love the whole design. Moto Z play um, though. Good phone. Stupid names. Really stupid names. Uh, let's see anything else. Oh, I just did a, this is my Android this week. And basically said, like, I'm on pixel phone now. Well, wow. I need to review the V20 <laughs> at some point. Interesting. Yeah. If you guys are looking for that LG V20 review, I promise it's coming. He's working on it. Have I talked about the V20 much on air? I feel bad that we haven't Probably reviewed this thing. Probably not. I, I'll just say this. I am struggling to review the LG V20. Why? I I, I don't (laughs) want to call it a bad phone. It's just so obnoxiously huge and doesn't offer anything in a phone that I ever look for in a phone. And I know my job is to just review phones and be objective about them and share my thoughts, but it's hard with this thing. Plus I have two. One died. It was a pre-production unit. Let me just let that be known. It won't even turn on anymore. And I didn't do anything to it. Like it's just dead. And the other one is a Verizon unit and it locks up once a day and forces me to battery pull. I mean, we're talking, it's 2016, almost 17. And I have to battery pull a phone 
And then sometimes after it locks up and just won't do anything, um, and then I do get it to start reacting to touches and stuff again, it, it's like, it like wipes out some of my default settings. Like all of a sudden the LG Home is back. And I've been using Google Now Launcher on it because I can't stand Google or LG's no app drawer launcher thing. Yeah, it's the V20. That's not good. <laughs> it doesn't sound fun at all. It is not. It's just, it's been a really frustrating phone. And the fact that it's so huge. Because like you, I'm a skinny jeaner, I guess, if you want to call it that. And this thing just doesn't, yeah. can't hang. Get yourself a satchel. <laughs> I, just need a, I just need a fanny pack, I guess, yeah. No one would judge you in I this. I could never town. take this thing for a run. <laughs> I could never take this thing oh, for no. a run. I would need a backpack for my phone if I tried to take. I'm like staring at it by the way. That's Get one I'm of those at. like bicep straps. <laughs> look at this. And so it can just take up half of your arm. And, I mean, this is not a pretty phone. Like, look, <laughs> it's like two eyes like looking <laughs> it's at got you. Little eyes and the nose. Ooh, that's pretty funny. So weird. <laughs> uh, I. <laughs> Uh, I don't really know what to say about it. It has this secondary display that like no one uses. Uh, you're not a fan. <laughs> I promise I'll have a review of this thing. Sorry. And it is not the worst phone I've ever used. Don't get me wrong. Like the performance outside of it locking up twice a day. <laughs> it's not bad. I don't even have anything good to say about it. I'm just going to shut up now about the V20. Battery pull. It's so 2010. <laughs> Every once in a while, like I plug it in and it starts charging and then like I pick it up again and hit the fingerprint reader and the screen's just black mm. and, and then the always on display like <laughs> disappears. And then like five seconds later, like maybe the screen comes on, but I can't interact with it. And then it's just like done and I have to <laughs> have to battery pull it. Oh, like, can, when was the last time you battery pulled a phone? In years, I guess. It's Something. gotta be so long. Like a this like an s4 or something maybe battery pulled yeah so uh yeah probably like a g3 g4 i mean i think that was that was like the last phone i used with an actual removable battery so <laughs> it's been a while <laughs> yeah but a lot of those phones i remember like well like the g5 for example you can take the battery out i i pulled the battery out only to swap out for a fresh battery this thing is like it's so broken and dead that I have to pull the battery out and reboot it because you can't even force reboot the thing. That's a bad oh, man. Hi, Caramba. Oof. And like, I should probably tell LG, like, dude, all your review units are dying. <laughs> but then they'll send me an ATT one and yeah. still on the phone sucks. And look, I picked up the G5 a couple of weeks ago, right before the Pixel came out. And I actually don't mind the G5. It fits nicely in your hand. Camera's fine. Performance is great. The G5 is actually a pretty underrated phone. It's pretty ugly. Don't get me wrong. But <laughs> this thing, uh, anyways, I'm on the Pixel. And I plan to be on the Pixel for a while. Is nice. that kind of where you're staying after you get done with all these uh, phones out of China? Um, yeah, I mean, that's definitely the plan. The Pixel, so far, loving it. Um, I will have my... Uh, Le Echo Le Pro 3 review done hopefully soon. That's why I have this ridiculously huge monitor screen behind me. It's a TV that it, I'm attempting to understand the EUI ecosystem that Le Echo has created and is bringing to the US. So to better understand that, uh, I have to review a TV now. So once that's all done, and then maybe once I do something with the Mate 9, I don't know, guys. Like This is a really big phone. Do you really want to know all like all about it um but yeah once all that is said and they done want more they want more of the chocolate yeah oh man lg uh, chocolate how old is the lg chocolate there's a lot going on that was a boy that's an old phone they make a chocolate too they made a chocolate three what oh my god there was an lg chocolate three 2008 Oh, yeah, that was a while ago <laughs> i remember that because i think that was actually the phone that was a competitor to the lg 2020 or the voyager that i had they were like do you get the chocolate or do you get the voyager and i was like i'm definitely getting the voyager I mean, I mean, the Voyager, yeah, the chocolate that's, too. that's the I iphone know. killer as everyone called it back then in 08 man these phones chocolate too look like i had a color screen it's probably 120 by 100 resolution uh so wanda so wand i'm sorry if i'm mispronouncing that but uh he or she, I just can't tell right, right now what's going on. Did let Echo find some cash because I heard they ran out of cash. Yep, they, they are. They are officially, they are officially out of cash. And 
Yeah, I pretty much bankrupt them. They sent me a review unit for the Pro 3 and this TV, and and then the next day they announced that they were out of money. You're going to ask <laughs> so. for a shipping return label, they're going to be like, sorry, we can't afford that. Uh, yeah, you're going to have so, to hold off on that. So what, what Tim's talking about is Echo ran this massive U.S. press event and said, like, look, we're here in the U.S. Come buy all of our stuff for really cheap at our own website. And then they sold a couple of phones through their big splash uh, flash sale. And then like the next week, they go, yeah, we're running out of cash <laughs> real quick. We got a little ahead of ourselves. I I've never seen anything like it, that uh, a company does like a massive press event and pushes forward like they're going to take over the world. And then a week later goes, I don't think we could do this, <laughs> which right. is pretty much what they said. Like, no, I don't think this is going to work. We, uh, we don't have any cash. Yeah, definitely going to need some help. Um, I just want to quickly point out a comment that we got here from Daniel. It says, come on, guys, you sound elitist, knocking every phone. Your fans that own these phones don't want to hear you ragging on their phone. It's a matter of opinion. And, like, exactly. I practice what you preach, man. Like, this is just our opinion. And um, for the most part, we're just having fun. I don't, I don't really think we're knocking anyone too hard i'd say i think we kind of trash on everything we're pretty even about our trashage i think we try to be <laughs> right um that's but i mean hey if kellen has a crappy v20 experience i two. would want him to get two crappy v20 experiences if he's having bad experiences i would want that information out there maybe maybe that's going to stop someone from buying a v20 and that could be a good thing so like you said just our opinion and, and that's what we're sharing yeah I mean, uh, sorry if you think we're just completely trashing everything, and we're not trying to hurt people's feelings or make them regret their uh, no their uh, purchases. But look, we I think we're that's one of the things we've always done pretty well <laughs> is we kind of I don't we we keep it real with phones. Like if there's something wrong, like we're gonna talk about it. We're not gonna like we don't have a really cozy relationship with these companies like some of these other news outlets do. Like we do our own thing, and we've kind of always done our own thing, and. We will tell you exactly what we think about stuff. We're not going to sugarcoat anything. Right. Um, we're not tr out here trying to offend anyone. So if you're offended, I'm sorry. But like we, we, we don't really sugarcoat stuff. We're, we'll tell you like it is. HTC Bolt sucks though. <laughs> <laughs> Hashtag triggered. <laughs> Samsung Shield says, at least they aren't lying like other sites about the HTC Bolt. Yeah, we're definitely not close with HTC. I'll just say, I'll just say that. Yeah. And we don't have any problems telling you what we think about the HTC Bolt, unlike some of the other ones that fly around the country with HTC. Yeah, definitely. Try and keep it real. Yeah. 100. But yeah, it's Friday. Um, I don't really have any apps to talk about. Surprise, I think, you know, it's just that time of year where developers aren't really launching all too Everyone's many Everyone's already like on their winter vacation or something. And It seems like that. Um, I What I always do is I go into Google Play, then I go to my all section to see like everything I've downloaded recently. And the only new app I have in there is just a guitar tuner app, but it's not new. It's not special. It just tunes guitars. So. Damn. Yeah. I don't, I, don't really, I don't think I've installed anything new in a while. You don't use apps, so. I don't remember the last well, time. Well, right now, about. all the things that have been recently installed are Daydream VR apps that I was testing. Right. So it's just filled with VR stuff. Was there, the, the, was there one that you actually used? Because people might be thinking about Daydream. Was there a cool app? I know you said there weren't too many experiences, but is there one good one? Yeah, th there's actually a couple of decent games. There's a game called Danger Goat, and it's like a 3D puzzle game where you're a goat, and you just have to get your goat from like the beginning to the end, and it's like multi-level 3D thing where you kind of spin around the 3D space, and you have to break things and move things. <clears throat> it's actually a pretty well-made game. It was fun. There is a game called VR Karts Sprint, which is basically Mario Kart for VR, and like you get to look around and see the cars around you, and you pick up like like items and throw bombs and stuff. It's just like Mario Kart. That game's actually pretty sweet. Uh, there is a bowling game that I have not yet played. But come on, VR bowling? How could that not be awesome? True. It was like four bucks, though. It's called action bowling. But come on, bowling. Goats are pretty cool. And goats are always fun, yes. Goats are funny animals, man. Does anyone know what, uh, what are they called? Up udders? Or they're like on their neck? They're kind of like dangling pieces of skin and hair. I don't know what they're, that part of the goat is called. I have, I just think goats are one of the more unique creatures in the animal kingdom. They got the little beards. 
Oh God, goats scare the hell out of me. This is, com- this is completely scary. Random, but there's this movie called The Witch that came out like in the last oh, year. Yes, yes, yes. Oh my God. Like the goat shows up in one of the first scenes and you just look at that goat and you go, <laughs> that goat's possessed. Like yeah. instantly. And the goat scares you the rest of the movie. Not going to yeah. spoil anything, but that damn goat from like the opening scene, you're like, there's something wrong with that goat. Yeah. I thought that movie was going to suck and then like, the ending happened i was like okay that was totally worth it like that was just a good that was just a pretty, good wholesome family fun movie it's pretty disturbing in the it first is. couple of scenes which again i'm not going to spoil it for anyone but yeah yeah Go as, a, as, as a parent i will say that that there's a it's pretty disturbing as a fan of like metal music and everything dark in this world goats are cool <laughs> so i can get down with goats dan says he thinks goats are scary. Try, try coming face to face with a moose. No, no, no. I, I mean, I've I've been around plenty of moose in my life. I grew up in Montana, yeah. and I just you just keep your distance from a moose. And but like goats, come on, like goats are they're they're all possessed. They could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. You got anything else? <laughs> um. No. I mean, as much as I'd love to, just talk about the election politics i really just don't want to i don't i don't want to give any more energy into that it's ridiculous it's uh, yeah yeah it's just a uh, yeah i don't i don't, I don't nah. really want to talk about it either. <laughs> no i'm sorry to anyone who might possibly <laughs> want to hear our opinions on what happened this week but nah it's not worth it dude i don't want i don't want more triggered people <laughs> coming no no Everyone just be nice to each other. That's all I'll say. Just be nice to each other. We're all humans and we're all, well, we're not all good people, but we're all mostly trying to be good people. We try. Nice to each other. Just stop. All right. Anything else? Nope. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Yep. Have a fantastic and safe weekend. No, Tim and I did not protest. (laughs) I'll see you out there tonight, Kellen. (laughs) Peace.